And I think we have a record in net worth, Steve Leisman. Good call there, Scotty. Uh, U.S. household net worth rising by $5.8 trillion in the second quarter to a fresh record. That net worth is $141.7 trillion with a T in the second quarter of 2021. Powering that were stocks, which added $3.5 trillion of this amount. So that's a big number right there. Real estate also adding $1.2 trillion. Debt, $17.3 trillion. Uh, and total government debt, $28 trillion. Consumer credit growing at a pretty healthy pace, 8.6%. Mortgage debt, everybody's buying houses, so they're taking on debt to do so up 8%. Federal government debt up 9.6%. So, guys, when you think about the outlook, remember, there is a lot of wealth out there in stocks, despite that modest sell-off we had on Monday. And plug that into your economic forecast for consumer spending and the wealth effect. Scott? And before I let you run, Steve, just quickly, because we have you and we did speak to you yesterday, what do you make of the market's reaction post-Fed? You know, I, I think what's now out there, Scott, is this idea that the Fed is going to be accommodated for a long time. Some people call this hawkish. I don't think so. What was hawkish when we reported in August, you know, that the Fed looked like it was going to be tapering this month? So you get another month reprieve. We talked yesterday, $660 billion of additional uh, uh, purchases, even while the Fed is tapering. And you know what? So there's a big debate. You know, is it the end of 2022 they hike rates or 2023? It's still just a quarter point. I know the smart guys around and women around the table there right now are not making long-term investment decisions based upon a quarter here or a quarter there. Well, Scott. I said that the most important thing I think I heard yesterday wasn't necessarily from Jay Powell. It was from you, where you said that we're still going to be doing more than QE2. And I think, you know, the market, I think, gets it and understands that there's it's still going to be a wash in liquidity, even if they take a little bit away. Can I just add one more thing to that? Remember, these are pandemic emergency programs. And it's hard to argue either the stock market or the economy is anywhere near the pandemic. If you want to get concerned, it's on whether the Fed is staying too long, not whether or not it's leaving too early. Yeah. Or if it has to get more involved, perhaps next year, like Jamie Dimon wonders himself if inflation gets worse sure. or, or stays a little more sure. sticky. Yeah. Steve, good stuff. I appreciate it. Right. That's Steve I, I think. No, I'm sorry. Finish sure, your thought. Scott. No, finish yeah, your thought. It's OK. Finish your thought. No, no, I, was, I, was, I was just I was just going to say that the issue of uh, inflation remaining out of control or otherwise being something the Federal Reserve has to address by bringing forward rate hikes. That, to me, is a much bigger concern. I don't know how big a concern it is. We need to look at supply chains, all the other fun stuff about pricing. And I think we talked about this yesterday. I'll, re I'll repeat it. The idea that companies are finding some resistance at raising prices, that's good news for the inflation story. What may be bad news for earnings stories, if, the macro, if you're concerned about the macro situation, mm -hmm. if they can't raise prices, they run up against a barrier. Margins. That's good news longer term for inflation. Margins, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and a hit on margins. Steve, thank you. That's Steve Leisman.